hopefully that's gonna work pretty well. So we got this installed between cars. Obviously, be by, uh, obviously by between cars, I mean, we have another car. Yay. And this one addresses the issue that was brought up on one of the Facebook Live videos as far as what amplifiers and you know, do you like power acoustic or any of the other fun stuff? And it comes down to budget most of the time. Like how much money are you willing to spend to get the sound of bass in your car? And this guy is doing what we like to call the five o'clock special. And by that, you get a Planet Audio amplifier and a set of Kicker Comp C12s. It's not gonna break any windshields, but it's fairly inexpensive. You only need an eight gauge for that amplifier so you don't have to buy a big four gauge power wire. It's one of those, hey, I just want bass systems that they want a little bit more than let's say a P300 10 or 12. We want maybe two 12s, so we sell them this, and there you go. We don't do too many of them anymore. Most people have graduated on to bigger stuff, but every now and then we still get one of these that comes in, and you know, we have to knock them out. Let's get started. What are we doing? Where are we going? We're going on as the passenger seat? Yes, sir. All right, sir. Sir? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, sir. Is that where it's going, sir? So we're gonna mount this underneath the seat here. He's planning on replacing this next week and by next week That could be next year But either way we're gonna go ahead and put the high level to low level behind here so that we don't have to pull this amp out and Rerun all the work that we're doing today. Oh, is that right, sir? right sir all right so while he's doing that i'm gonna go ahead and get the wires prepped for the amplifier so that he can screw them in and then i'll go into the car get the radio out Lately, the cars we're getting, the battery terminals are all like, just like dead or funky. Yeah. I mean, it seems like, I mean, we had a couple cars last week that were that way. Yeah. Just shit on. I mean, I don't think anyone ever pops their hood and looks at their battery anymore, do they? Oh, why? I, it's I don't under know. the hood. You yeah. don't need it. Mm, it's crazy. Well, that looks neat. Let's take a look and see what Fernando's built over here, shall we? So here we go. How's this gonna mount? Uh, this is the factory reel. Okay. Right here. So it's two holes in there, so we can put like two 10 millimeters. Right. So I just make my holes. Right. And it's gonna screw it there. I made two pieces so the AC vent. Oh, pop. so you made risers. Yeah, cool. All right, cool. It is. A lot of coolness going on here. I know, man. All right. All right, let's take a look at this battery. At least in one part. This is what we got going on here. It trying to loosen that up and all it did was bend. I did get this bolt up, managed to replace it with a new bolt, but yeah, there's like barely any metal here holding this on. Yeah, I think, I think I've seen enough of this. We're just gonna start carrying these because this is pitiful. So with that being said, where are we gonna put the fuse? Right here, we have this cool spot right here for a bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the fuse holder right here at an angle like this. So a power wire will come out of here, around this, into this, and then out to the battery. So we're gonna go ahead and bend this up some plastic to mount this right here. To install the high level to low level adapter, we need three things, power, ground, and we need a speaker. Now what we're gonna test for first is power, and that's constant 12 volts, so we don't need the key on it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our meter, one of these guys here. Now if you don't have a meter and you're trying to do 12 volts, head over to Dean and Fernando's tool drawer at D and F tooldrawer.com and pick yourself up one of these nice fluke meters. I mean, you get a meter anywhere, it doesn't really matter, but pick yourself up a meter. What we wanna do is set it to DC as we said. We're gonna go over here and put it on ground. There's a giant bar across the back. And now we want to probe our harness until we find constant 12 volts. What's oddly enough is the first wire we find. Okay, we know that this blue with a white stripe is constant 12 volt. Let's go ahead and move it along and find our ground now. And to do that, we're just going to undo our ground and 
There we go. Now the ground can be a bit more tricky because the ground could be an ignition, the ground could be a light wire, the ground could be a lot of things. If you don't know, like in this case, we could walk over and get the reverse harness, but that's not the point. We don't know which one of these is going to be ground. You could sit here and you can turn on the ignition and make sure that like it's not lights, it's not accessory. You could go through all that. But if you're not sure, you're like, man, I don't know if this is ground or not. Then don't hook it up to the harness. Just go ahead and tap a ground in the back. That's what we're going to do for this. We're not really too concerned about finding the ground in this harness. We're just going to use where we were probing right back here. Now what we need to do is find a speaker. Most car manufacturers are nice in that they started to twist the wires together. Some don't. Not all of them, some of them. So what we can do is we can look here on this plug, find our twisted pairs. Like here we go, here's some here. And it looks like they're all on one end of the harness. And I'm trying to figure out if it's an over or under. No, it's not. We want to go ahead and set this to continuity or ohm, whatever works for you. We have a four ohm load, that's good. We can go right above it. All right, that's good. So we both know those are both going to be speakers. Now we're going to hit it with our tone generator. All right, so we have the passenger front. So then we know that this green and blue wire here are the speaker wires for that speaker. We can tap into these. So now you need to know polarity, meaning which one is positive and negative. If you don't have a polarity checker, you can do the nine volt trick to where you just take a nine volt, you tap it into here, you have a buddy over there with a flashlight shining it into the door, and you're trying to see the speaker move. You can also take the door panel off and look at it and see if, what direction it's moving. We're gonna use a polarity checker to do that. So what the polarity checker is gonna do is create that pop, pop, pop noise for us. And we're just gonna use this to test it. All right, so we have it backwards. So the first one is going to be positive. So the green is positive. So now we can go ahead and strip those back. All right, so now we're just gonna take our positive wire and thread it through the hole we created, just like a needle. Go ahead and pinch it down, and then we're gonna wrap it around. Now what we want to do is take some tape, go ahead and wrap that. We'll go ahead and we'll put a zip tie over it. Then we'll repeat that with the signal. So we have our LP72 high level to low level hooked up. We have our harness tape back up. This is what the amplifier is going to plug into. So we have the high level hooked up. Now we just need to run the power wire up underneath the hood and finish that up. So here's what we came up with. We put a 10 millimeter bolt through here to hold it in place, built a quarter inch mount, attached it to the battery, and then loomed it all up. It goes into the firewall over there where we drilled the hole. So here's the amplifier under the seat using the bolt, the factory bolt here. And there's gonna be one here. Of course, put the seat all the way down. No clearance issues at all. This one is done. Right, Fernando? Right, sir. Don't start with that. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. On to the next one. See you tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye.